I I missed. It didn't. It didn't. You're not do gonna it. believe this because of the display that we just showed. But backstage, <laughs> Carrie and I got our water bottles, and each did it three times. And on the third time, it worked. Actually, so just like pretend that we're cool. <laughs> fuck. Oh, we're absolutely like not gonna do that with like the mics now. Just like fuck. Couldn't even like fake one, it. Like, like one more, but like one more. Damn it. Like, let's just start the show. Let's hey, just make everybody. One time and one time only. Gray Haddock. I would have. He did it. No, it he up. just did it. Fuck it. He did it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. For any young people in the audience, we might say bad words. So just, just so you know. We, we, we don't know what you're expecting. Yeah. But fuck it. Hey, everybody. How's it going? Thank you to Crunchyroll for putting yeah. this awesome show. This has been really it's pretty rad. fun. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is this it's the first annual, right? First G inaugural. Gus won't hate me for saying that. I'm gonna, first, I'm gonna kill you. <laughs> um, hey, we have 45 minutes. We have 45 minutes. Yeah, we're not trapped in here with you. You're trapped in here with us. And um, our dumb jokes. What? Uh, this one's some amazing Ruby cosplay already. Just yes. walking around the floor. Thank you to everyone who's been repping Ruby yeah. this weekend. Yeah. Or just so, our, our RT anim stuff in if, general. Uh, been if, camp if you're camp, cosplaying been... uh, as Ruby characters or anything in the RT anim universe right now, can you stand up real quick? Hey! Oh, wow. Oh, I saw you first thing Hell this yeah, morning. Look at that. Woo. We saw Battle Damage Daddy Ironwood in the Artist Alley. There was yeah, a, a couple wonderful of Nikki works. cosplayer there, too. It's been fun. Nice. It's been times. Yeah. Oh, Kim Kim's not anime, so. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm just kidding. It's okay, neither is Ruby. I don't, yeah, I'm kidding because it doesn't matter. Um, oh, Cole just texted me, introduce yourselves, you idiots. Oh, Hi, hey. I'm Miles Luna. I'm a co-creator, co-writer, uh, and a voice actor on Ruby, and it's fun. Yay. Hey. Yeah. Fuck. Gray, your turn. Hi, my name is Gray. I am a co-director on Ruby. I'm also the head of Rooster Teeth Animation and used to voice some characters. Hey, Ruby Chibi's still a thing. Throw it. Oh, that's true. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, my name is Carrie Shawcross, co-creator, co-writer, and current director of Ruby, and I voice Neptune. Woo! <laughs> ah, that was, you got more bounces out of that than I was thinking yeah, you were going like to. a nice hop and skip to it. Okay, so um, we got 45 minutes, and we're gonna do some questions in a little bit, but we thought we would start by showing you guys something kind of new and cool, maybe. How, how does that sound? Now, before we do that, we do have to ask that you please not film it. Yeah, I see it. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah. You can film the rest of this, that's fine. Yeah, I don't if care. you want to film the rest of this for whatever reason. Yeah. Uh, Th this can. is going up online really soon, yes. so you don't have to cam it right now. Yes. It'll be available to everyone shortly. This is also a work in progress video yes. that we're going to show you. So uh, a super finalized version will be going up soon. And why don't you let people wait to see that one? This is something we want to do special for you guys yes. who are here. <laughs> because you're amazing. So just like... Let's just let's yeah. just let's just keep this between us friends, okay? Yeah. You are you are henceforth legally allowed to slap phones out of people's hands. You can do that. That's it's true. I would like I would actually appreciate it if someone exercised that right here today. If you see someone try and film what we're about to show you, just smack that out of their hands. Yeah. But uh, we didn't tell you to do that. So no no uh, I told you to do that. Okay, well all right, he put it on him. So you guys wanna show it? Yeah. Let's do, show it. do the thing. So, so um this is a work in progress of the Blake trailer. Let's roll the video. Oh, it's behind Let's us. Dim the lights. I dim. Can I ask you something? Sure. Why... Why'd you join the White Fang? Same reason as you. But... But why fight when I pass for human? It's okay. You're not the first person to ask. I know I look just like any other human girl, 
And for years, that's how I was raised. We lived in Mantle with the other Faunus working the mines. But my parents wanted something better for me. They managed to enroll me in an Atlas prep school. <laughs> Imagine that. A little Faunus girl from Mantle going to the City of Dreams. I felt like a princess. But I had to follow a set of rules. No bringing friends home, no talking about my parents, and absolutely, under no circumstances, was I allowed to change colors. No one could know I was a Faunus. That sounds terrible. It wasn't. It was confusing at first, but it wasn't hard. Especially if it meant being an Atlas. Sometimes the other girls would say things about the Faunus. That they were animals, that they were dirty, or they lied, and I'd say those things with them. Because I felt like I was one of them. And then, one day, there was a cave-in at the mines. I was at school when the news broke. Apparently, one of the workers tripped while handling some agitated dust crystals. The explosion caused a chain reaction. And my friends snickered. What happened? He got away. I'm sorry. Do you guys like it? <laughs> Yay, thank you. Yeah, we, we wanted to, um, you know, since we announced that we're doing all these different character shorts, we wanted to, you know, use some of them to show off some cool, you know, new fights that we could do. We also wanted to take some time to, you know, get more into some backstory, especially for characters like Blake and Ilya. Um, just kind of show off more of the world and, you know, give people a little bit more uh, of that story. Yeah, but uh, if that trailer's an indication of things to come, uh, Blake and Ilya are, uh, are not done dealing with their past. No. And uh, we'll get to explore some of that in Volume 5. Yeah. yeah. And that's it. We're totally done. We're absolutely not doing one more short. Definitely not. <laughs> Just kidding. Definitely not. We uh, are. Hey. So? Speaking of... Um, Wasn't me. He's dead, Jim. <laughs> um, speaking of upcoming Ruby stuff, so we recently announced something pretty buck wild. Um, we're gonna have a presence at New York Comic Con again this year, which That's I That's not crazy. <laughs> it's on we the other side of the country. But unlike past years, we're going to be at Madison Square Garden, and that's insane. That's, yeah, that's ridiculous. Like, 
two or three years ago when we were going to New York Comic Con, I was like, oh, you know what? Uh, Aziz Ansari is doing some stand up. Oh, he's at Madison Square Garden. Yeah, I'll go watch that. Cool. Now we're there. That doesn't make any sense. It's we shouldn't be there. Ludicrous. Um, but it's crazy. They're making us pay, pay tickets for it for us. Just us. <laughs> yeah. Just to let us in. It's crazy. I think we should do tour shirts. Tour shirts? <laughs> oh! Sing, single tour, Madison Square Garden. <laughs> the, the one stop, yeah. Um, so, yeah, that's, that's some incredible news that we just were able to put out, and we wouldn't be able to do stuff like that or stuff like this without uh, the support of you guys. So thank you so much for continuing to watch and for dressing up and being amazing because, oh, my God, you're the best. And we love you and appreciate you so much. Yeah. Hey, what else? What else is going on? Oh, that's it. That's pretty much it, huh? That's pretty much it. Yeah, we're working on Volume 5. Uh, things are going really well. Uh, we'll have more cool stuff to show at events like that. And... Uh, Probably at some, you know, an RTX that's right around that area as well, maybe. Wink. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, I think at this point, um, thinking maybe if you guys had some questions, we could kind of start to talk about stuff. Yeah, I think we've got uh, someone that'll be walking around with a microphone. I don't know if you've ever been to one of our panels before, but we're pretty laid back and just kind of like talking with y'all. So that's kind of what we're going to do. Yeah. Um, where is that microphone? Beautiful microphone person. Are they out here? Oh. Uh -huh. Oh, here they come. I'm coming out. Hello, that's Becky, and she is really cool. Yeah, yeah. Becky! Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, if, uh, if y'all have a question, uh, just raise your hands, and she'll run over there. Or, or that works okay, cool. yeah. in a very, very orderly, orderly fashion. And while they're starting to uh, form the line, uh, who's been watching the Japanese dub of Ruby on Crunchy this summer? It's pretty cool. That's it's been so wild. So fun. It's surreal, yeah. It's, um, man, yeah, it's, uh, I thought, like, when, the, when we, you know, when we first did the, the partnership with WBJ and everything, I thought that that was, like, wow, this is crazy. It can't possibly get crazier. And then they're, like, oh, yeah, we're going to put on TV now. And I was, like, okay, that's crazier. That's awesome. <laughs> like, it, it, like, kept escalating. So, um, we're incredibly, like, honored, and, and it's, uh, it's been awesome. That and the Blaze Blue game. Yeah. Oh, my yeah. God. In case Cross you're catching them, and, yep. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's been amazing um, getting to collaborate with those guys over there at Arc Systems. Um, we get to look at stuff for approval, and it's the best. Approval, which like, is basically like, us going like, like oh, hey, this is awesome. Hey, uh, we just need to get your approval on this like crazy as hell awesome combo move. How do you feel about it? And we're like, yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, it, 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 uh, uh, good. Uh, if I could give one note, uh, it's great. That's my one note. Amazing. So. Thank you to um, Arc Systems. So yeah, um, as you guys learn for questions, just throwing this out there, uh, we're not gonna answer spoiler questions. If your question is, what hap what's gonna happen to blank? Do you think in volume five we'll see, stop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so just throwing that out there, and if not, we'll probably just you know verbally accost you. It's, it's no big deal. We'll, we'll all have fun <laughs> together, so it's um, fine. And, and yeah, do also like try and keep your, you know, we've got a fair amount of people here in line. So like, if you're like, I have a question, actually it's seven. Maybe just pick one. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe pick your favorite one. Cool. Thank you. All right. Hey, Professor Port, what's up? Hello. Oh. Hello, children. <laughs> oh my God, you look amazing. Oh, thank you. Uh, I know originally you guys were using Tozer for the animations. Are you still using Tozer or are you using another app and application? So um, between volume three and four, we actually switched to Maya um, and, uh, not to get too technical for a second, but we, so we animate in Maya. We've always modeled in Maya. Uh, now we animate in Maya, uh, and then we render in both Maya and 3ds Max. Um, in Maya, we use Redshift to do all of the backgrounds, and then in 3ds Max, we use a plugin called Pencil um, from PSoft, which is, um, it's something we wanted to use since the very beginning, but it just doesn't have a ton of integration with other platforms besides 3ds Max. Um, but that's what's allowing us to do, you know, from volume four on the, uh, the tune shadows and the lines. We tried to get it to work in Poser, but it was just going to be kind of like hacky to get it to work. Um, you know, so yeah, so we, we basically switched to Maya starting with like uh, Chibi and then volume four. Thank you. Yeah, of course. Thank you. Awesome question. I like technical questions. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I was really appreciative of the kind of the Steelbook uh, box set for volumes one through three. Are you planning on continuing doing that at appropriate intervals as you go ahead? I, I, yeah, we would absolutely love to. Yeah, yeah. We, I, we appreciated it too. Yeah, yeah we, no, we, we we thought that one turned out great. We got a lot of positive feedback about it, and um, yeah, the the merch team back at Rooster Teeth really wants to figure out when they can do the next one. Yeah, we we um, um, especially like Gray, Patrick, and I. Uh, fuck off, Miles. Uh, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Uh, but like we worked with them to like to make that into 
you know, try to make it look as cool as we could because we wanted it on our shelves as well. Um, so yeah, we're, we'll, we'll find the, you know, the appropriate times to do it, but that's absolutely something we want to keep doing. Yeah. Physical media is not dying. It's not. It's not. It's interesting. Yeah, it is interesting as we go forward. Like, it feels like every year, like, the question is posed, like, are we going to make DVDs? Are we just going to make Blu-rays? Are we going to make either of these? Cause here, have a USB key. Go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It'll have, like, penny symbol on it. Just out of curiosity, who here actually watches the Ruby DVDs? Not like the Blu-rays, but the DVDs. Wow. That's a lot wow. of that. That's man. cool. All right. Well, we'll keep doing it for you guys. Fine. Standard <laughs> death. We can't fit everything on the disc anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's actually that's actually become a problem with RVB and Ruby is, like, oh. Ah. I think These things are getting long. The, the, the question here is, are we going to put it on VHS? Should we just go ahead and do a... Yes. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Now, here's the thing. Uh, it, it, like, uh, we'll put the Japanese audio on it yeah. and then not include subtitles and make everybody have to read. Exactly. Off the translation. <laughs> Comes with the a true manual. true experience. The, 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 the um, retro. Yeah, yeah, great question. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. We hope we get to do them. What's up, dude? So, so watching some of the more recent episodes, I get the impression that a lot of the female characters are just dying to get to know John. What do you think about that? Dying to get to know John? It was a pun. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, that made me sad. How did you not, like... <laughs> Shut up, Isa! <laughs> Isa's like Final Fantasy X laughing at me. Ha! It's, so it's Saturday, somewhere like Barb, like she's in her apartment, she's like cooking, and the barber just went. <laughs> a pun. I hear it. I'm needed. He's just going to stand like that until I you can't leave. Look at you anymore. I'm just kidding. I can't. It's, it's okay, Jean. We'll show you some chibi later. You'll be yeah. happy again. Yeah. Neptune, stop talking to Jean, because. Oh, uh, yeah, that's about how things go. Hey, your, 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 your costume's awesome, though. Just you look great. throwing that there. Yeah. I think we all know the true question here. Is little Jay gonna voice Weiss? <laughs> hop, 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 hop. <laughs> uh, uh, little Jay is going, is going to voice Junior and Chibi. That's not just kidding. Because um, that seems appropriate. That does uh, seem appropriate. It does seem appropriate, yeah. yeah. Hey, we, we, we didn't cast the Chibi Hunter thing. They could have done that. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Next time. Next time. Yeah. <laughs> we'll, just, we'll, do, we'll do like all, we'll, you know, we'll do a, a separate steel book just where we replace. Weiss with Little J throughout the whole thing. Suggestion, Separate Mr. Director. Uh -huh. What ahead. if we replaced everyone with Little J? <laughs> I want to replace everybody with uh, Floyd the Geist from Chibi. <laughs> hey, guys. Flip the hand. Whoops. That's stupid. stupid. Thank you for your yeah, thank you. <laughs> uh, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Uh, don't really know if this is something I should ask you guys, but for... Uh, as an audiophile, what do you guys like to use for recording, like hardware and software-wise? Oh, hang on. I think I can tell you what mic we use. Give me a second. I just oh, yeah, from the. Uh, yeah. We might. We might be able. Uh, software-wise, we're on Pro Tools. Nice. Yeah. Can you also spell out the mic so I can just re record that? You know, I'm just. T H E space M I C. Oh, got it. That's <laughs> my bad joke of the minute. Is it like a Sennheiser or something? It's a. Uh, oh man. Do yeah. it, Kerry. Find the man. He'll, that he'll tweet he it seeks. later. Yeah, go, go to the next okay. question, and then I, I will, once I find out. I, so, so the other day we were in a recording, and the, uh, the studio asked us what mic we wanted them to record on, which is not something we'd ever been oh, asked cool. before. Yep. Um, so I asked our, oh, here it is. It's a uh, uh, Neumann TLM-103. There you go. I One guy in the audience. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, a Neumann. Mm -hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, okay, yeah. Of course, it was so simple. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I don't know what that means, or if the brand is good, but I think it sounds neat. So, yeah. It's a step up from the closet. Brought uh. to you by Neumann. <laughs> cool. Thank you for Next your question. question. Yeah. Okay, so I'm curious about the development of the Faunus race. So, what was the concept of it originally, and as we get to Volume 4, where we see the island and all, what encouraged you to, like, do more than just, like, the cat ears or just more than mammal faunus. So it started with Monty being like, let's have a girl with cat ears. And us being like, let's have a girl with cat ears, yes. Um, and, and then it was like, okay, was she the only girl with cat ears? Like, is she, um, like when people walked, when see her, I think like one of the first, the first things for me was like, okay, someone's walking down the street and they see a girl with cat ears. How do they react? Do they go, 
the fuck? Or do they go like, okay, it's one of the people with cat ears, okay? Okay, yeah, we went, like, we went to go more towards that. Like, it wasn't like incredibly uncommon. Like, it was a thing that people were used to. She wasn't herself abnormal. It, it, she was just like a, a part of like another, we kind of figured out like, okay, she'll be kind of like a different race, okay? A lot of it too also came between Monty being like, I can't decide if I want her to have cat ears or a bow. Cause I like both. And then, and then cue the, the meme of the, the girl from the... Taco Bell. The taco, it's not Taco Bell. Come on. I don't fucking... I yeah. it was. Why not both? It's like a taco shell. Oh, uh, yeah. Taco shell. That's what it is. Come on. Don't be racist. Against foods? Yeah. <laughs> no, no, against Taco Bell specifically. <laughs> Ew, is that Taco Bell? Taco Cabana, actually? Fuck off. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that everyone knows about Taco Cabana. Anyways, so it, it kind of turned into... What is better? I mean, oh, it's absolute, I don't think anybody would argue that Taco Bell is better than Taco Cabana. Let's not, can we not divulge into this conversation? <laughs> Miles, we have 23 we more minutes. Not, can I also I just start? say Taco Bell's menu is Taco just the man. same ingredients presented in different fashions? That's, no, it's the same stuff. It's like, it's gonna have lettuce, tomato, sour cream, some sort of shredded meat and cheese, and then hard shell or soft shell, and then or it's both. like, do you want it folded like a pizza pie? Yeah. Do you, you want it in a hand sandwich? Who cares? Question. It's the same stuff. If that had landed, how great would that have been? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> would you like one of the ingredients to be infused with Dorito cheese powder? It could be any of the ingredients. Look. The Mountain Dew Baja Blast is legit, and sometimes the Doritos Locos Tacos is what you need after a long night of drinking, okay? Am I proud to say it? No. Will I eat it? <laughs> so to answer your question, uh, we wanted it to... Uh, <laughs> Right, right, the creation of this species in our universe. Um, we wanted to add to the, you know, the, the fantastical elements and the mysticism of the world, so we were like, okay, cool, we'll have people that have animal traits. That'll be cool. We don't want them to be, like, too OP, or we don't want, like, the, what was it, like, the Khajiit in, in Oblivion? Like Skyrim, yeah. In Skyrim, no, or get, in, they yeah. Get, they, get, they get fucking... No, I mean... don't like the Khajiit. They're like, oh, man, fuck you guys. They make us sit outside, and we're like, oh, Khajiit. Oh, yeah. So, um, we, that, so we decided to instead, to, like, limit it to just, like, one animal trait per, per character. Which I kind of wish we hadn't done. Yeah, you know. Hindsight, uh, whatever. Yeah. Uh, uh, Ruby 2. Yeah, and Ruby 2. In not, Tubi, not, in Tubi, it'll be great. Yeah, well, not, all the animal traits. Not Ruby Volume 2, but Ruby 2. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, Hope that kind of answered your question a little bit, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. By cool. the way, for the um, two physical traits question, Yeah. why don't you make one of them a werewolf? Could, well, if it's all one physical trait, I, I think that'd be like a separate thing at that yeah. point. It could I, be a I, will say, I will say, it's gonna be, um, it's gonna be fun. We spend a little, you know, we, we're gonna continue to spend some more time at uh, Menagerie in Volume 5 and seeing more kinds of faunas and like different kinds of traits and stuff that maybe are a little more rare and you would only see at like a place like Menagerie and we're really excited for that. So yeah, stay tuned and thank you for the question. Yeah, that was hey. good, thank you. That was awesome. Hello. Hello. Hey. Hello. Um, so I'm a really big fighting game fan. So nice. during EVO, when that was announced, I was literally screaming. So were we. <laughs> what, was that you? We saw you on the video. That was great. Yeah, we saw <laughs> so one guy in the back. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't me. Um, how long were you guys holding on to that? And who came to who first? A little bit. We were holding on there for a little bit. Yeah. You have a fun story about yeah, this. Yeah, this is, this so what happened was um, it all started last year when for, I think it was Arc System Works, 15th anniversary? I think so. 15th, yeah. So there was this huge write-up in Forbes uh, talking about the, the history of Blaze Blue and uh, Guilty Gear yeah, and with, the, um, the company as a whole. Uh, with Morrison and Daisuke. And, and Daisuke, yeah. And, um, and at the very end of it, the journalist asked him the last couple of questions, and he goes to Maurice and he says, so what's your future? What do you want to do? And he says, well, you know, you know, we've been dealing with the original stuff for a while. There's some other IP out there that we'd love to just kind of play with and see what we can do with it if they gave us the chance. And the reporter said, really, which one? And Maurice and said, well, there's this thing called Ruby. At which point our inbox has exploded of everybody. Yeah. Like, hey, did you see the thing? Yes, we saw the thing. Yeah. And uh, so I cut to about six weeks later of me navigating um, both uh, the Japanese and the US offices trying to get a hold of somebody saying, hey, we're the people that he talked about in the article. Yeah. Can, can, can we talk to him? Uh, they went ahead and connected us and um, that conversation went well. And then uh, he said, hey, if you ever come out to Tokyo, you should swing by the office. And we said, Funny you should mention that. We're going to be out saying hello to WB uh, this December. So then we had that first meeting where I think uh, there was a photo that went out of us in front of the uh, Christmas tree in their office. Yeah. 
And then they just, came that was just to, us kind of saying hi. There wasn't yeah. really any like. It was us saying hello. That yeah. went well. They pitched us on the next project. They came out to Austin um, in the spring, and uh, they visit us again around the time of Evo. And, and it's it's just been this uh, amazing back and forth. They're so cool. I they're love so them. Laid back. They're so unbelievably rad. I love them. We've had beers with them a few times now, and they're all hilarious. The last time we all got buzzed and then talked about who our favorite Pokemon was. But what was super fun about it was that, I mean, obviously they have different names for them in Japan. So I, like, they'd be like, yo, what's your favorite Pokemon? And I was like, Haunter. And they'd go, Haunter. And I'd be like, oh, shit. Uh, uh, purple Spiky Dude. And they'd be like, oh, yeah, Haunter. I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it was so much fun. My and um, it was, I remember, like, the first time we met them in person, though, we met them while they were in the middle of, like, their production crunch. Yeah. So they were like, hey. Like, they go, like, came like, Hey, what's up? Oh my God, it's Ruby guys. Just come, come in here. Please don't go in there. It looks like everything's on fire. Yeah, like, just like well, let's go into the conference room. They go in the conference room. And there's like a mess of stuff, and they're like, "Oh, is that shit still? Oh my God. <laughs> oh my God, we're gonna fire cleaning stuff. Okay, we're, we're really sorry." All of this was in Japanese, and Miles didn't hear any of it. But <laughs> he, he picked up on the tones. We, yeah. we, we also thought was going on. They couldn't let us see that they were working on Dragon Ball yet. That was the other thing. Yeah. yeah. Yes. That, that if we, yeah, if we went behind the door, we would have seen all that magic that was just going on. There was a new trailer that just came out last week. Did everyone see that for the new DZ game, the fighting game? That thing looks, looks cool. beautiful. Yeah. yeah, they're doing some cool stuff. Yeah. Yeah, yeah they're, they're, they're super nice, and uh, we're excited about this project and maybe things in the future. Who knows? Thank you for your question. Thank you. Yeah. Hey. yeah how's it going? It was very nice meeting you guys yesterday. Um, my and question you. is, with this crossfighter going on and everything, and you know Ruby Eclipse being a fantastic game, any other video games in the works? Like just uh, like ideas. You don't have to. Um, give I would say you know we're definitely uh, of the opinion that like we would love to do anything. Um, we're obviously not going to make it because we're busy doing other stuff and also we're dumb and don't know how to make games personally. <laughs> um, so uh, there's nothing specifically video game on the horizon. I will say that maybe there's something game related on the horizon and I'll just leave it at that there's 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 a couple of things I would just you know keep, 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 keep watching the headlines over the course there's of the year things. Things. there's a couple things all right thank you fuck you <laughs> you, you have yeah. 17 minutes left keep going um so my question oh i'm sorry that wasn't at you that wasn't him <laughs> failing again i, so I can't close. believe we're getting this question <laughs> no. sorry. i'm so sorry my question is so about sorry. the bloopers if you have any and if so where can we find them oh uh, wow. they're on a hard drive so we like we <laughs> We, we definitely like save on, uh, hold on to things. Uh, the problem we ran into in season one was like, for RVB, that's basically what we do is, you know, we would get in there and we would record and we'd always have this like subfolder that we save stuff in. And then usually what happened is at the end of the year, whoever was the intern, we gave them the honor of, as in force them, one year's me, <laughs> one year's you, uh, to make the, the blooper reel just because everybody else was so busy. And it was like, it's, it's always been like, like when I was a fan of Rivers Blue, it was like my favorite part of the disc. Um, it's a lot easier when you can go just machinimate it. Uh, it's a lot harder when you have to try and fit it into the shot or make new animation for it, which is basically just impossible for us. So we've got a ton of the stuff, and I don't know exactly what we're going to do with it or how we're going to make a blooper reel. At some point, we're going to try and get something out, because there's also, also, also man, we, we all say some really messed up things in that booth. <laughs> uh, Lindsay's one of the few people that's very careful. She like refuses yeah. to swear in the Ruby voice, yeah. which I really admire. I, I think that was the other part of it too, was like, especially in the first couple volumes, like we wanted to make sure that like nothing on the disc could possibly be not kid friendly. And obviously the show has grown up a little bit, uh, and we've kind of loosened on that a little bit. But the comment, the 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 blooper track would just be filth, vile, <laughs> sin. Oh, yeah, it's out there. It, it, we'll we'll figure out something. We'll figure out something. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Hi. Hi. Hello. The awesome. <laughs> Thanks. Um, I'm just wondering what it feels like to be a part of a series that actually made a grown man cry. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, yeah. I guess, like I guess. Good. I would say great. Yeah. No. Well, it's so it's. Um, I'm gonna get real for a second. No, it, uh, so so comedy. Um, I, I, well, ever since I was a little kid, I was very loud and hyperactive, and just kind of like a lot to deal with. 
Yeah. Um, just to always, be clear, starting as a little kid. Yeah, no, still very there much There is no now. cap to this. It's yeah, no. still happening. <laughs> um, but, uh, uh, yeah, no, I, I always liked entertaining people and, like, making people laugh and stuff. But I remember I made a video in, in high school my senior year that, like, kind of served as, like, a goodbye video for my graduating class. And I remember when it aired, uh, it was, like, a school news thing. Um, I remember I was in the homeroom when it was airing, and I heard people in my class crying. And I was like, what the what? Like, it was really strange because that is a very powerful thing. Like, I don't know, I'm a big weepy baby. Like, I'll cry, like, first five minutes of up, get out of here. I'm just like, no! But, like, I don't know, like, there's something, it's weird because, uh, I don't know, that's a very powerful emotion, and the, being able to be a part of something that can move someone that much is hard to, it's a strange feeling. I mean, that's the thing, I mean, that's why. I like doing this stuff. Like that's why I like being a storyteller, is because like I want to make people feel things, whether it's comedy or sorrow or you know like missing this thing that's that that is happening. Like I I, I just um, making people feel emotions is cool because that's why I watch these media. Like that's why I tend to just personally like TV a little bit more than movies because like I feel like you get a little bit more connected to the characters and have more interaction with them. Uh, and you just feel for them a little bit more, and you get to see them in different instances. But I'll, I'll fucking cry at anything, so. I would say that we, we don't take it lightly. Yeah. I think that um, to get into some of the bigger, deeper, more cathartic moments, that's that's a pretty powerful thing. And you do, it's not like we're you know just trying to mash that button all the time. But I think it's, for me, it's being able to achieve that bond between you who wanted to tell that story and other people that you wanted to share that story with, and if we both feel the same weight or have the same magnitude of reaction to that important moment in the show, then we both agree that those stakes were important or that this is why this is sad or this is, I don't know, it, it eventually kind of translates into, um, and then carrying that over into real life. If that's yeah. important in this story, then maybe if you ever happen to bump into something similar in real life, then you know, not to trifle with that emotion or to yeah. do the right thing or I don't but, I mean, know, blah, I, blah, blah. Taking it seriously is, is a big thing too, is like, um, not to get into too many spoilers, but in case you haven't seen, in case you're not caught up with stuff, but like, you know, when the stuff at the end of volume three happens, you know, a lot of times we'll, we will we'll see shots, you know, you know, hundreds of times, thousands of times sometimes before it goes from, you know, start to air. Um, so after you see it a couple times, you'll start like, maybe like make fun of like one aspect of it or just like, you know, like, like, like all the times like with the animator, like we'll have like our own jokes about it. Um, the first time uh, that we were reviewing, you know, the end scene of volume three, uh, where all the shit goes down, like myself, the animator that worked on it, uh, the the lead animator that was standing there, like we all just like teared up because it was like, it, 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 it meant something to us and therefore we knew that it would mean something to other people who were also invested in the show like we were. So that was a long winded answer of saying, great. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you, that was a great question. All, all right, um, first of all, it's very nice to meet you for the first time. It's very nice, nice to meet, meet you. you. Uh, and on to the topic in question. But even before the Japanese dub, Ruby has, been, uh, has, been, has caused a very big divide between the anime fan community. And even during the first, when Crunchyroll first included Ruby in their show, there was a two day protest from anime purists that prevented the staff from leaving the building. That, that, that was, was a, a hoax, you know, right? That was that, a joke article, just yeah. so you know. Yeah, <laughs> that was actually fake. There's, but there's, yeah. this thing, really? there's this thing called satire <laughs> in Photoshop. Still, but it felt like that. It definitely felt like that reading the comments. <laughs> yeah, still, though, it doesn't really change that, that people would actually respond like that. Yeah, so, you know what? I, I don't give a shit anymore. I don't care. So, what, so, what was your question? My, was your my, question? Main, my main question is, compared to other anime influence television series like Avatar and Teen Titans, what do you think makes Ruby more more divided than the than the others? I don't know. I, th I think it just happens to be the most recent entry in the conversation. And when I say that I, I don't care about it, what I mean is is that um, so long as things are cool, what does it matter? Yeah. I think that um, okay. Kind of in insert all the boilerplate here. Uh, nobody in Japan cares about it. They use anime to describe anything. Anything animated. If everybody in the West decides that they're going to say, okay, but we've somehow decided we're going to be the, the gatekeepers of the definition of the word anime and that it must be produced in Japan, and as soon as anyone who's not from Japan touches it, that invalidates it as anime, okay. if that's how you want to spend your energy judging all this stuff, then hey, more yeah. power to you. In the meantime, 
um, I'm at the point where um, I'm really enjoying the confusion. I don't want to be pinned down. Yeah. Uh, you, you, you think we're anime, and, and you, you're going to humble us by saying, yeah, it kind of reminds us of some of that cool-looking, detailed, yeah, we'll more you know, storytelling that's not necessarily for kids. Awesome. If you don't, but you're still having fun watching it, Awesome, and and I think just the fact that it's got this conversation going, that's I'm just kind of enjoying the talk. Yeah, I don't mind being banned from R, Reddit slash R slash anime. It's fine. It's not a big deal. I'm pretty sure uh, he's sitting in the audience. And I'm staring right at him, and he's putting his head in his hands. Uh, uh, Austin uh, is one of the animators on on Ruby. He's been around since you know day one, and uh, he was very adamant, uh, not in the debate itself, but in trolling people who were very adamant about the debate itself. And how many Reddit accounts did you get banned? Just two. Just two. Just, just two. two have just been to be clear, from our just anime. two. Uh, yeah, I mean, they, like, I, I, I've never gotten the impression that like, uh, people think that we, like, that there's a, the, the, like, people don't, don't think that we're anime, people don't think that core is anime. I have not ever gotten the impression that people thought one of us was more or less anime. Uh, that people are going to declare whatever. Last Man is not an anime. They're going to just say that anything LaShawn Thomas, even though he's directing a fully Japanese crew, is not anime. LaShawn Thomas rules, by the way. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. we love LaShawn. Uh, whatever. So. You know, here's the thing. Um, our marketing department would love it <laughs> if somebody could like pin down the catchphrase. You're welcome to tweet us if you've got the perfect. Like, you know, Netflix made their big announcement and they just keep calling it international anime. Um, please, please, nobody call it American anime. <sighs> I, don't, I, don't, I don't need that. Barf. Yeah. But I don't uh, care but, if we're anime or not anime. I don't want to be American anime. Yeah, yeah I don't want to be American yeah. anime. But yeah. I, in, in the meantime, yeah. I'm, I'm loving that we're not labeled. Yeah. Oh, just, would so. Canadian anime be called Kaname? Now that I can get behind. <laughs> yeah. I can totally yeah. get behind some Kaname. Hey. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd just like to point out that Cole gave me a nod and an okay, and Issa silently shook her head in judgment. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, let's all watch cartoons together, huh? Yeah, who cares? Yeah. All right. <laughs> all right. Thank you for your question. Thank you. I, I don't I don't care about the debate, but thank thank you and keep doing what you're doing. It's I appreciate so it. Thank you. Oh, you're super rad. Hi again. Hello. Um, I just everybody stop. I just talked to my water bottle like it was a mic. <laughs> <laughs> I hate myself more than I've ever done in the past. Go on. <laughs> um, so I know it's a pretty large process in terms of animating the fight scenes and getting the camera angles right. And um, how long, but I want to know more in terms of the writing process. How long does it take for you guys to kind of get the initial script through? And then I know you do revision edits and stuff like mm -hmm. that. How long does that process take to get it to the final script form? Too long. Yeah, too long. Um, we're too slow. Yeah. And we, we write too much and have to trim a whole bunch. Yeah. Uh, it's we also, don't know yet. Yeah, I actually don't. Like, I couldn't tell you. Uh, um, the other problem, too, is that, like, and not problem, but like, so basically after a season ends, or even before season's end, we'll start talking about the next season and we'll kind of like, we'll, we'll roll out our, our roadmap and go, okay, cool. We need to hit somewhere around here next season, okay? Yeah, that seems doable. Like, I think we can like have that much happen in this next season. So cool, we'll hit there. All right, that's end. Here's where we are at the beginning now. All right, let's start filling stuff in and we'll talk about, okay, well, we've, you know, we've wanted to do, you know, thing X for a while. Maybe this is the season to do it. Like, they're going to be in this town. It makes sense. Or, man, last season we really said we we're going to do thing Y, but I don't know how we're going to have time to do that. Is it super important to the story right now? Okay, maybe it's going to go in the season after. Um, so we'll kind of like get like a, you know, a rough idea of like, okay, here's, we know what's going to happen this season, but here's exactly all of the things that are going to happen each season. Then, or in, in this season, then we break it down into episodes and then we start breaking it down into scenes and stuff like that. So it's a very long process. Like we have, you know, we're, we're still writing the season because the other thing too is we, we, you know, we get a couple months where we're just writing, but then I start directing the season based on the scripts that we already finished. So it's a, like trying to figure out my time of like, I write in the, I, like, I wake up, I write for a couple hours. I, I'm paper and pen apparently. I don't fucking, I'm stupid. And then, uh, then I go in and direct for the other like you know three quarters of the day and then I do more writing at night so it takes us a little bit longer to generate the actual script sometimes but the way we combat that is we'll you know we'll let production know uh, hey we know characters uh, X Y and Z that were in the outline they're showing up in this episode um, so we can start talking about their concepts and start getting the model and stuff like that even though we don't know exactly every single line they're saying in that episode we can still start building the assets and stuff like that so we kind of like stagger the whole thing out um, 
But we're able to do that because we have a you know, strong outline at the beginning that we stick to as much as we can. Cool. Does that kind of make sense? Okay, cool. No, it does, it does. Yeah. Thanks. Hello. Hello. Uh, hello. So um, in Ruby, what I like the most is the weapon. So I have a question is, have you ever thought of making someone's wheelchair become a weapon or like, like a mech suit or something? Uh, actually, yeah. The answer is 100% yes, actually. Yeah, actually, 100% yes. Um, we, we, we haven't figured out exactly where we're going to fit it in yet. I will say that, um, you know, Atlas has a lot of tech, doesn't it? Mm -hmm, it sure does. It has a lot of like really smart people that make really cool things. So and I really wonder, cool you know, you know, if and when the story eventually gets to that area, maybe there'll be some cool stuff like that. <laughs> um, That's weird. I have something specifically in my left eye. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, um, fuck you. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the answer is yeah. Like we we think that'd be really cool. Yeah. Right, that'd be awesome. That's yeah. My opinion. Yeah. Yeah. I like the way you think, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks so much for the question. Yeah, thank, yeah. You. thank you. I'm going to try this. There we go. Yeah. Ah. So, ah. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> you all should have just cheered and made him turn around and cry. <laughs> Hello. What's your question? Hi, I'm Alexander Hada, and I was wondering if you had any advice for someone who wants to start their own animated series, like specifically like production and bringing in a team together and mostly money too. <laughs> it, it helps. So, um, it depends on, okay, so it depends on what uh, you want to start with, if you have a story or if you yeah. like to animate or something. What, 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 like, what aspect do you want to be involved in in it? I'd like to be the... Uh, director, art director, animation director. Okay, yeah. so here's what you do. You have to put what you can bring to the table online and say, yo, I have these ideas, this is what I can bring to the table. Does anybody else think this is cool and wanna help? And that's how you get started. It's not gonna start with money, it's gonna start with passion and people that are excited enough about that idea and about that vision and wanna come together and be friends and work on something together. There, there are, a lot, of, there are a lot of sites out there where basically like, hey, I'm a, I'm a modeler, uh, I need someone to you know, rig the things that I'm working on so somebody can animate them. And somebody will say, well, I'm an animator, I kinda know how to rig, and I guess like, I'll do something with it. Oh, this is cool, let me play with it now. I mean, like, th there's, a, there's a ton of sites out there where you can kind of like get together. I know Blender's got a really big community yeah. uh, and that's free. Um, um, and there's, so there's tons of stuff out there. So it's, it's really just yeah, trying to find other people in disciplines that you don't know how to do. Yes. Uh, so that they can do their thing and then you can do your thing and you can all work together. Every, everybody in this industry, it helps having experience, not necessarily like a degree from someplace, but a reel that you can point to and say, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Um, also, uh, internships, if you can get one at uh, you know, any animation studio, anywhere, even, I mean, honestly, like if you're, you know, um, in anything that involves any, like if you're doing 3D, like if you can't get an internship at somewhere that does like 3D cutscenes or something like that, mm -hmm. even just getting one at a game studio, because then you're at least around 3D, you're around these people, um, and eventually they'll know somebody who knows somebody, but I mean, you've, it's one of those things where you've got to start somewhere. Um, so you might not start exactly, you know, it, nobody's first job is directing, but maybe yeah. your, you know, your third job is, or you, you do that on the side as a, as a, as a passion project with, with people who also want to do stuff like that. And then maybe you're also like an intern, uh, at, uh, at, you know, 2D studio or something like that. So, I mean, um, yeah, it's get out there, find people who want to do that stuff too, and just try and get like experience doing anything like professionally, I think. Yeah. The, the biggest cost that you're going to have to pay when you start out is just your free time. Yeah. Because you're going to need to find a way to make ends meet other ways, and it's, you're paying it's, with just all those hours outside of work. It's going to be late nights, and it's going to be, you know, weekends, but if it's what you like doing, then it that's just your fun. hobby. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah. Great question. Cool. Thank so you I think, so much. I think we've got, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Of course. So, so got, unfortunately, we are out, out of, time? of time. Okay. Yeah. I know, I know, I know, I know. But where else can you find us this week? I think, uh, or this weekend. Uh, I think we have another panel. Doing a little thing called fan service this evening. Yeah. Hey. Oh. Fan service is our anime podcast with a bunch of beautiful people over there. We're going to be doing that later today uh, and talk about all sorts of stuff. Um, we also have some signings. You can check out uh, the Crunchyroll app and, and books and all those things. Um, and we'll also probably just be walking the floor. Buying yeah, I bought toys. too many things yeah. already. Do you want to throw the times? 
Yeah, so uh, the signing will be at 5 o'clock, and then fan service itself will start, I think, at 7.45 on the Hime stage. That's going to be a rowdy right. panel, yeah. I can tell you right now. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, we said at the top, thank you so much yeah, for watching our thank show. You. Thank you so much for supporting us. Really we could not it. do this without you. You're amazing. Um, and have a great con. Let's just pretend it happened. Thank you all.